Good morning, good afternoon and good evening and welcome back to Jamie Photography. So in this video I'm going to take an older image actually. I took this picture six years ago uh, with my Olympus EM1 at the time which was uh, an EM1 Mark II so it was 20 megapixels. It's a micro four thirds sensor camera so we are a little bit challenged with dynamic range because the, the sensor itself is a quarter of the size of a full frame. Um, but what I'm going to try to do is show you that you can still take uh, older images that you've shot and also um, maybe not quite such high resolution as we have today. doesn't matter. You can still produce really good images. And I, I, I find a lot of uh, enjoyment going back and look at some of the pictures I took in the past. So this is this is the image. Um, the original is is here. This is what we shot. And this DNG file is uh, available for you down in the... Um, in the comments below, you're welcome to download it and follow it along. All I'd ask is that you please respect my copyright, and if you do choose to repost this image, please give uh, please give credit to myself at Jamie R. Mathlin. That'd be much appreciated. So yeah, we're going to turn the image into this. It's a relatively straightforward process. We're only going to use Adobe Lightroom this time, and we're going to focus a little bit more on the um, point color function, particularly how to mix quite complex masks and point color together to give you absolute control over the uh, the luminosity, the color, the saturation within specific areas. So I'd be happy to uh, to show you how to do that. If you do enjoy the video, I would uh, kindly ask you to click like. It always helps the uh, YouTube algorithm. And uh, if you do have any comments or questions or tips that you'd like to leave, I really do like looking at those and uh, I do try to respond to every single one. So thank you if you do take the time to do that. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would really appreciate you joining my adventure here on YouTube and uh, have some more fun with me as we as we go forward. So, OK, let's get started. So this is... Uh, this, the river Spree running through Berlin, and this is part of the German government buildings. Beautiful modern structure. Um, and as I said earlier, that I took this image in 2017 uh, using my uh, Olympus EM1. Now that camera was a great camera. I enjoyed using it very much, and the functions and, and the functionality of the of, of the different tools and features that it had was quite extensive. However, it was limited by its micro four thirds sensor, which means that we, we only have 20 megapixels here, but more so that being micro four thirds, it's only a quarter of the actual sensor size of a full frame. So, so we don't have the level of detail that I would normally be used to uh, with one, one, one of the full frame cameras. But nevertheless, it doesn't mean we can't take good photographs and process them. Uh, the the dynamic range is a little bit limited, but we're able to, to draw out from... Uh, from the image uh, quite a bit of detail. So I'm going to try to uh, bring this alive a little bit. Uh, it's it's quite a nice image. I like the composure with the fence running sort of down in the bottom left right corner here and moving away and the river flowing around. So and there is a, there's a couple of people over here talking to each other. I think it gives a little bit of scale as well. So let's first off just look at the crop. I think we just need to lose a little bit edge of that wall there. So I'm just going to go into crop here and uh, I'm just going to move that over just so we've got just a line running down there um, and I think just a little bit maybe off the top just to compensate for that crop on the side hit return and that gives us the crop where we want to be so the the perspective is actually not too bad but I'm going to go down and just to transform and just click auto just to get it a little bit a little bit straight it didn't really make much of a difference so I'm going to pop over to guided and I'm just going to go on the edge of this uh, pillar over here, make sure this pillar's straight. And I'm going to go over on this, this pillar here, edge of this pillar, there we go. And then I'm going to go up to the top there. So that's just pulled it true. And maybe we'll use this bridge over here as our horizontal plane. So I'm going to click at the bottom of the bridge there and the bottom of the bridge there. And that will give us a, a sort of true perspective that we've got straight lines and things come together quite well. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, probably bring down bring down the highlights, not the shadows, sorry, bring down the highlights slightly, and I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit more. And um, I think I'm just going to add a little bit of warmth to the image just, just, to, uh, just to warm it up just a little bit. But what you see is there's quite a green hue. The, the, the type of lights that are used 
in these buildings um, tend to tend to put out a little bit of a, a greenish hue, and it's also not helped by the the performance of the sensor. Sometimes um, some some sensors have um, two lots of green pixels for every um, blue and red pixel, which gives you a Bayer pattern, which actually makes things slightly slightly greener. And Sony, for example, has that in their sensors. Now that's not a bad thing because having more green pixels actually increases the light gathering capability of the sensor. So it's it, it's something that, that manufacturers do to improve the performance of ISO and, and light gain. And it's easily corrected because all we can do is go to the tint slider here and we can just add a little bit of magenta, just bring the magenta in just, just gently there. And that will just bring the color, not too much. I think I'm going to go about 15, just brings the color balance back into this area. Now, normally I perhaps would consider doing a sky replacement on this sky. Um, maybe we could put a starry sky in. Um, but I think what I'd rather do is try to make a little bit of a feature of the architecture here and try to have some sort of light beams coming out into the sky so that it it doesn't seem so it doesn't seem so boring in that sense. And we can also darken the top of the screen slightly. And I can do that now by going straight over to masks taking a linear gradient from above up here like this and just bringing that in from the top there, bringing down the exposure slightly at the very top of the screen, just a little bit, not too much. I'm just going to bring that back up just, just a bit. So we've just got a little bit coming in, in there. So how are we going to light this? Well, it's pretty well lit already and it looks pretty good in terms of the light coming from the buildings. Bringing down those highlights um, did did help to give you some of the detail inside the buildings. But I think we need to emphasize the lighting up here. There's obviously these floodlights on the ground are lighting up and hitting the ceiling here. Same over here. So I'd like to sort of light that a little bit and create a little bit of a sort of night mist fade away as we go off the edge here. And I can show you how we do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a radial gradient, my favorite tool, and uh, I'm just going to pull out quite a large radial here and I'm going to turn it and put it in the center of where that light, mostly where that light is there, like so. And then I'm just going to increase the the uh, exposure a little bit to brighten up that, that, that ceiling area. Maybe add in just a little bit of tint there, just, just to take it off of pure white. And then I'm going to go down to clarity, and I'm going to add a little bit of clarity in there as well. That just gives you a little bit more information here. Now, what you've ended up with having a radial gradient here is, is you end up with a glare you can see along the edge here going out into the sky. Now that, that could be realistic and I think maybe falling away over here it could be quite good but I don't really want to see it above here so I'm going to subtract from this radial gradient a brush. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that area there. Hold down the space bar so you can move over to that area. There we go and I'm going to uh, I'm going to subtract the brush. Now, it's important that the feather is very, very low. I'm going to put it at about 10%. So we've only got a very small edge to the brush, um, maybe even more, maybe go 15%. And that we want the um, we want the um, flow to be 100%. We want to remove 100% of the radial gradient. So for example, if I draw there, it, it removes the radial gradient from that area. So I'm just going to control Z or Command Z on uh, on a Mac. Um, so so subtract a brush. We've got the settings: fifteen percent, hundred percent on the on the flow. And I'm going to come right back to the edge of the edge of the image here, and I'm just going to overlap the edge ever so slightly. There we go. And I click once. Now I come over here and I do the same thing again, but this time I hold down the Shift key, and it will draw a straight line of that brush across to here. Now you might say. OK, well, how are you going to deal with this curve? Because there's quite a nice curve there on, on the edge there. Well, I'll show you. We take another click as such. We hold down the shift key and we go along in small sections, working our way down with the edge of the brush in the same part of the shadow that we've got on the very edge of the of the roof there. And we just as it curves more, you get your clicks closer together um, so that you effectively can't see cannot see what's going on now that gets us to this point here which is fine now I want to create a little bit of a flare coming away over here so that was my last click so I can use the the uh, the shift key and I can 
sort of click again and, and you'll see that it fades away as it goes away. But in fact, I want it to be a little bit more diffused than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that. So Command or Control Z. I'm going to go back over to the sliders here and I'm going to bring the feather up much higher, about 80% now. So we've still got that click remaining from our last click. The light's coming around at this angle over here, but there's also this light coming off over here. So I'm actually going to pull it over this way, hold down the shift key and click again. And you can see, I click again there and I go a bit lower and I hold down the shift key, I click again. So what we're doing is we're effectively working our way down with a starting one click, holding down the shift and then clicking again. And then it creates this natural sort of look of light, the edge of light coming off there. It's very subtle, um, but that, that's what we're looking for. Now I'm gonna bring the feather back to, uh, to zero because what I want to do now is just remove the rest of this up here. So make the brush bigger and I'm just going to just paint the rest of that out. Just make sure we've got no, none of the, uh, the radial gradient in this upper part of the sky still showing. So I've just gone through there. So as you can see there, if I zoom back out now, you'll see that, um, there we go. You'll see that it's gone back to that natural look, but we've created just this little edge coming off here. Now, if we want more, we can obviously pull this out further if we want to have more of that sort of light edge because that brush we put in went quite a bit further. You can hover over the brush here and you can see where you brushed. Um, so you're hovering over the brush in the, the mask section there, and that will show you where you brushed, and you can see that feather edge coming away there. You can hover over the mask as a whole, the main mask, and you can see where you've got your lighting effect. And you can see over to the very far left, there is a little bit of residual left. So we can just click back on the brush there, and we can just take the rest of that out. So if I hover over there now, you can see that's gone. So that, that's, that's given us quite a nice look to that area there. Um, as I said, I warmed it earlier, that radial. We can also blue it slightly if we wanted to, just to sort of try that as an effect. But I think the slight warming works works slightly better. We can increase the contrast a little bit and maybe make it just a little bit brighter. We see that nice little edge coming off there. So so that, that that's uh, quite a nice effect for the top up here. And you can see it, it creates this brightness in the sky that, with that line coming away. So we'll do the same over here. So we're just gonna zoom in on, uh, on this side of the screen, there we go. We're gonna create a new mask, a new radial gradient, and we're just gonna pull that radial gradient out, turn it to the sort of angle that, where it works, like so. Now, I don't want to make it too big, this one, because I don't want to light too much of the buildings up down below, but we can we can sort that out in a minute. So, there we go, that, that's, I'm gonna go, go quite high with that one. Bring up the exposure a little bit, Add that little bit of warmth in that we did before, not too much, just a little bit of, of magenta to balance it off. And again, we've got this glow along the edge. So we subtract a brush. We take a brush with a lowish feather, around about 10, 12, 15%, something like that. Take, make the brush slightly smaller using the square brackets to the left of the return key. And I'm just gonna come in there, I'm gonna click click once, and like I said before, I'm just to overlap there, hold down the shift key, and then work my way around, clicking, coming up to the edge, and then just clicking on the edge there. So we get that representation of the curve as we come round. So I'm just gonna to get to there, right? And then I'm just gonna click on the edge. Right now, we'll do the same thing again we did before. We're gonna change this feather up to about 80%, roughly around there. We've still got that click there, but I'm going to come up a bit higher, like I showed you before, over here. I'm going to click again using the shift key, and then I'm just going to go back into that position, come down a little bit, and then back in that position and down a little bit more. There we go. And then just, just feather that out. So we've got that feathered edge down that side there. I'd like to do something similar up here, as though we've got a sort of line coming off here. So I'm going to go back and click in here and maybe just, just go upwards to the top of the screen, just bring that down, to the top of the screen here, and click once, go back, click again, and just blend that edge out that you've got coming here, so that works quite well. I'm gonna bring the feather back to zero, and make my brush bigger using the square brackets, and I'm just gonna paint the rest of that out over here. We hover over the mask to see if we've got it all, we do. So we've got that little bit of glare coming this way. Um, I might want to darken this edge 
along here, but leave a little bit of this up here. So I can drop the flow back to about 35%, bring the feather back up maybe to around 40%, make my brush smaller, about the size of it as it is, and come across there and come into there and then just paint off through there. So it's probably a little bit bright, so I'm just gonna make the brush bigger here, reduce the flow just a little bit more, and then just paint that over a few times just to weaken that, that sort of brightness coming off there. But we can see that that works quite well. And we've got this nice edge coming away over here. So I'm just gonna zoom back out. Let's go back out to fit to see how it looks. So it's a bit prominent coming away over here. So we can, with this brush that we've got here, which is still still working as a subtraction brush, we can just use it to just bring that down ever so slightly. Because it's only at 30%, you can sort of brush your way into, into it a little bit just to reduce it, just by passing a few times. You can, you can reduce that edge coming in there. There we go. And also, this is a bit brighter along here. So I'm just going to bring the flow up to about 75%, leave the feather where it is, and then I'm just gonna cut along this edge here to try to make sure that the, the uh, so I'm, I'm moving to one end, holding down the shift key and doing it again, just so it's not too bright in that area there. That works, works very well. Now I'd like to light this area up a little bit just to make these people a little bit more prominent down here. And there is some nice orange light coming from this window here. So we can create a new mask we can grab a radial, we can put a radial in here as though the light's coming out from this window here. And we'll just turn it down slightly like that. And then we can bring the exposure up in that area. Give it that little bit more orange, so it all works down there. That looks, that looks pretty authentic. Now I might wanna brighten this up a little bit more. So we can, what we can do whilst we're in this radial gradient here is we can add a radial gradient, select brush. Sorry, we can add a brush inside the radial gradient, put the feather up reasonably high and have the flow about 50%. And then what I can do, take the brush here, make it a little bit smaller and I can just wash over that there, look, just to make that a little bit brighter. And if I feel that I just want a little bit more around here, I can just brush around there to pick these people up. So that that's, that's a nice, I quite like that color there coming in there. We might even Make the brush a little bit bigger and just, just take a little bit more in there. There we go. Yeah, it looks nice. Now, let's have a look at the building on this side. There's a lot of detail here with the shutters, these sort of shutters on the window here, these slats. Looks looks really excellent, actually. What I'd like to do is emphasize this a little bit more, um, and I'd like to do that with uh, using a bit of clarity in there, but I don't want to put clarity on the whole image. So the easiest way is create a mask here, go to brush, Okay, and in that brush, I'm going to go with a relatively high, high flow and uh, relatively high feather. So we've got a, a nice feathery edge. I'm going to go down to um, to clarity, give it a whole chunk of clarity. Remember, you can always undo it if you've got too much there. And because there's so much detail in, detail in here, I'm going to add some some textures in. Not not a huge amount. I think about eight. And then using the brush, just make it a little bit bigger. I'm just going to sweep around in here pick up this detail can you see how it's really picking up those those shutters there i'm just going to go over to this edge as well over here can you see that probably this concrete pillar i'm going to pick that up as well yeah that looks that looks really nice we can also if we want to we can adjust the color now using the new feature that we've got the point color feature that we've got we can actually use point feature inside um, masks that we we've chosen to use so this brush at the moment as you can see there's that's what I've actually used the brush on hovered over mask there to show you well you can go down to point color and inside this actual mask you can now pick on the eyedropper pick the color that you want to you want to select and you can see in the little magnified box there exactly where I'm picking I'm picking that shutter color up so I've picked that up there now I can increase the color, decrease the color, or, or try to shift the color in terms of hue. So we can move more, more towards the green if we want to. It will affect the other greens in the image as well, and we can remove those um, if we want to a little bit um, later, but, but they are mostly limited to, to the brush and the bit that we've done with inside this mask. So you won't see too much of an effect over there. You can see if I go crazy here and really 
bring up the color, you're not seeing the color changes everywhere else. Where of course, if you use the point color as a broad brush, it would affect the whole the whole image. So I don't want that much green. That's a bit crazy. Um, we can we can reduce the brightness slightly of them by bringing the the luminance shift down. There we go, and uh, we can we can change the color more towards a yellow if we want to. I do I like the green, but I am going to put a little bit of yellow a yellowish hue in there and just add a little bit more saturation. Now at the bottom you've got the range slider. If you tick the visualize range, you'll be able to see where how much that we're actually affecting the overall image turn that off you'll see that it's it brings the blue back so with visualized range ticked and on you're only looking at the colors that you're dealing with inside of this brush okay so it's not affecting the blue you see the blue disappears if i turn the visualize off the blue comes back but we're not affecting the blue because the colors we're dealing with are, are actually based around this sort of greenish color so if i move that all the way to the left you'll see that you get a, a very subtle change in the way and all the way to the right in the color. So I'm going to go somewhere around about there. So that's well. Now the little circles that you see are where you are now with your adjustments and the black dots, that's where you started. Okay, so so depending on where, where you want to end up, you can grab the circle and move it closer if you want to. So by moving the circle to a color or thing that, a color or a shade or a luminance you want, it automatically moves the uh, the hue, uh, saturation and luminance. So you see there, look, as I move around and go from one place to another, it will it will affect the hue and saturation. So I was over here. And then on this little bar up here, this is your luminance. So that's where we are now. That's where we were. So if I, if I bring that down, it makes it darker. If I bring that up, it makes it lighter. So you can choose where you want to go based on, based on the color palettes here. And I think that's that's quite a nice touch. Now inside that brush, we've got the blue. So I could grab the eye, the eye um, dropper here and pick the blue color. There we go. So I now have the blues. And you can see that we, with no adjustment, the circle and the dots are in the same place. And if I wanted to make it uh, darker, the blue, I could bring that down. And if I wanted to make it slightly brighter, I could take it further up. As you see, the luminance shift has gone all the way to the right. And then I can also add more saturation if I want to by moving the slider or by moving the, the dot here to where you want to go. So I prefer to use these dots and circles because I look at the color up there and then I click and hold that and I start to move that around until looking at the color in the location to see what is it, what, what, what blue is it that I want? Do I want a sort of neon blue? Do I want more of a sort of Chelsea blue? Well, I can just sort of find where I'm happy with that. And I think that that works quite well there. And bear in mind, it's just inside the brush. It's not on the, the whole image over here. OK, so that, that looks quite nice. I like the, the, the extra uh, clarity. I like the color that we've got through here. Uh, it's very nice. If you wanted to, you can really shift the color inside that br brush. So rather than using the point color, we can also use the hue slider here and you can you can increase the saturation or decrease the saturation here, look, you see um, as well. So you've got a lot of control over your color. This is the old way we used to do it and, it and it still works brilliantly because if I don't want the green and I want it to be more blue, I can shift the whole thing across to the blue or I can go right the way across into pinks all the way down can change the hue colors the the saturation that sorry the hue and then i can adjust the saturation sort so if i go a high saturation there shift that towards the the blue you'll see that the the blue goes to purple and uh this 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 what was yellowy green goes to this sort of bluey green so uh not really going to change much there i was quite happy with the colors i'm just going to double click on the hue to put it back to normal and i'm double click on the saturation in fact i might just desaturate it just slightly that works very well. OK, I want to do something similar over here with this large circle. I think it's a wonderful architectural feature here. We're just going to zoom in slightly. Just hold down the space bar to reposition. So we're just going to come in there. There we go. So what I can do here is we can create a mask that is specific to this circle. And I'll show you how we do that. We go to Create Mask. We go to Radial Gradient. All right. But this time with the radio gradient, we, 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 we go down to the settings for the radio gradient and we 
we go to the slider for the radial gradient, which is always, I generally use it 100%, so you get a nice fade off on the edges. But this time I'm gonna bring it right the way down to something like 10% here. Just as a note, if you can't quite get to where you want to be quickly, you can always just click on the box there and then type in and press enter the number that you want. That will give you um, the, the, the figure for this feather. So I've got a tight feather and I'm going to pull this out, right, as a circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to get that as close as we can to the shape of this window. So let's just make sure we're in the center. A little bit more on this side. And you'll see that I've got ever so slight overhang. Okay. And that red dot circle is a hundred percent effect. And then it fades from a hundred percent to zero percent over that over that line there. If I increase the feather, that that will effectively increase the distance between a hundred and zero on the on the on the gradient fade within the radial. So so I chose to have quite a quite a small fade. If I go all the way to, to zero, you'll see it's a very, very hard, it's right on the edge. It's actually a very, very hard edge. And that could be a bit too obvious. So that's why I've just pulled it back slightly. And I'm just going to bring that in just a little bit more, just so we don't overlap the concrete too much. There we go. So you've got yourself a perfect circle just on that window using the radial. Now we can make the adjustments in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is definitely go down to clarity and bring up the clarity. You can have a lot of clarity in there. It does looks quite good. And I'm going to add a little bit of texture in there as well. And um, what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to uh, probably just bring up the contrast a little bit, open up the shadows so the lower area is a bit brighter and bring down the highlights so the lower area, the higher area is not too bright. So you can see they have their sort of committee meetings in there. So so if I just uh, if I just click away from mask, you'll see that that whole area has been brought up. Now I do want to add a bit more color in there. So let's just go back into masks. Let's select that mask, number six. And then let's increase the saturation a little bit more. Um, and let's add in some more magenta because you saw where it was that position. It's quite a deep green hue here so we're just going to move that over to the right say around about 20 just to balance those colors off just going to bring those highlights all the way down and um, i might even bring the whites down just a little bit there we go so i'm just going to pop back out to to full so let's have a look let's turn the masks off so you can see that really pops now over there really 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 pops it looks really nice I'm quite happy what we got going over here. Maybe we want to just take these windows and just darken them a little bit. So <clears throat> we can do the same thing we did previously. Um, we can take um, a, a mask. We can select brush. We can make the feather quite small and the flow 100%. So we know that we're, we're sort of picking up this area here. So I'm just going to go through there. You can go up using the shift click function, come down using the shift click make sure you don't over overdo where your brush where your brush is there we go we just come through there and I'm just going to go up and come down on this edge here right so just to fill in the corners you can make the brush smaller and then you can just paint that that into the corner there we go so you've got the the the, the, the brush effectively just along this edge here this little curved edge along here There we go. Now, if if you've gone places you didn't want to go here, you can always down hold down the Alt key or Option on a on a on a Mac, and just make the brush smaller, take away the the feather, and then holding down that key turns it into a negative. You see, it's a positive, and then you hold it hold it down, and it's a negative. So then I can just take that edge of that that away. You see, same here. I can just take that edge away. From that pillar now we've got the same issue with the pillar here what we can do is we can just make the brush roughly the same size in fact what i will do is i'll zoom in let's zoom into there we'll just add in the rest of the the rest of this over to here you can see just down that edge there so it's, it fills that gap well i want to remove it from 
along this bottom edge so it's a nice straight edge so I'm going to hold down the alt or option key on, on a Mac make the brush slightly bigger and then I'm just going to cl click here and then shift click up here just to straighten that edge up do you see how it straightened that edge up I can do the same here as well I'm just going to click here and then I'm going to go up to the edge here, shift click and we get a nice nice straight edge up there it's going to bring that back in using the positive there you go so let's deal with these pillars because we don't want to light these pillars up they're separate so we're going to hold down the option or alt key we're going to click at the top there we're going to shift click at the bottom and uh, we're going to make sure that our auto mask is turned off so we get a nice nice clean edge there we go and i'm going to come over onto this side as well so i click and then shift click yeah as we go this bit needs to be filled in here so i'll go back to the positive i'm gonna make the brush slightly bigger there we go click and then click again so we light that up we just want to straighten those edges off so we hold down the alt or option key and then we can just subtract the mask so that's the real the real key to using masks is knowing how to adjust the mask as you want it to sort of to work so again this pillar here needs to be removed so hold down the op option or alt key so we've got a minus i'm just going to click and still holding down that key i'm then going to hold down the shift key as well so i can draw a nice straight line uh, with with the brush there we go so we're still in the minus we're just removing those little bits of noise along there come up to here hold down the shift key so we're just going to do this this pillar here as well this long pillar so hold down the option or alt key to give my a minus click at the bottom go to the top shift click to the top same on the other side there i could make the brush bigger but i'm just showing you you can do it in two passes so the other pillars are inside the inside so that they they want to stay right so we just got to the top here let's clean these ones up as well so we're just going to click shift click sorry holding down the option or key just to make sure we hold the shift key down so we can just do those edges there there we go a little bit more off of that edge just a little bit more off that edge there i need to do that straight line along the top here so i'm going to take a slightly bigger brush i'm going to click down this end go all the way down to the end here on this line i think we'll do it on the top there so let me just click again there we go and then down there shift click still holding down that option or alt key we're going to do these pillars so as i say you can make the brush roughly the size of the pillar if you want to so i'm going to go in here click at the top and then shift click at the bottom you can do that make it slightly smaller for this pillar slightly smaller again so i'm just using the as i say the square brackets next to the um the return key it's going to come down here shift click so i'm still holding down that option an alt key to give me the minus on this uh, removal of this uh, mask so there we go i think we've got it a little bit over here optional alt key held down just to remove that a little bit on that edge there so that's how you can find detail your masks to fit perfectly into the area that you're looking to to adjust so if i go back to fit you can see that that mask is a perfect match and we used a brush so it's consistent it's a hundred percent all over rather than using a radial gradient which would fade from a hundred percent out depending on the level of feather that you've got now we can make the adjustments so we want to make it a little bit darker in terms of the light so i'm going to bring down the highlights a little bit we wanted to add that a little bit more of that sort of hue that we we had previously so we can either do that using the sliders here just add a little bit more in and some magenta just to balance those colors off i think that works very very well a little bit more magenta there we go so that's quite nice over there and maybe just open up the shadows just a little bit in that that area and important when you're dealing with artificial light is make sure you add some clarity just to just to make it pop and i'm just going to add a little bit of texture in there as well so we get that sharpness as you can see over here as we have over here and that and and this this round area so that's looking pretty good i've got to say i'm, I'm pretty happy with that I, I, what i'd like to do is just add a little bit of detail down here in the bottom left corner so i'm going to go back to masks take a radial gradient and i'm just going to pull a radial gradient out here now i'm going to turn it slightly 
make it a little bit bigger that way. So it's, it's almost as though these lights down here are creating sort of area of light. I'm just going to put the feather back to 100% so we get a nice feathered edge. And then I'm going to bring up the exposure. Here we go. I'm going to add in a bit of bluishness to that just to give the contrast between all these different lights and colours. That looks quite nice. Uh, maybe open the shadows just a little bit to sort of make it pop there. And of course, remember, some clarity. Really important to add some clarity and that really picks the stones up. Might even add just a little bit of texture in there just to make those stones pop a little bit more. And that sort of adds a little bit light in that bottom corner. Just going to bring it back a little bit. Yep, that works quite well. So I think all we're really left with now is to deal with this sort of distant area and deal with the river and these these sort of uh, reflections in the water. And the best way to deal with light reflections like this is, I find, is to go to radial gradients, take in little narrow radial gradients like this, pop them over the uh, pop them over the light there, and then you can you can add some brightness, just make them pop a bit more, add a bit of contrast to them. Um, probably add just a little bit more colour to really make the orange pop there and of course add a little bit of clarity just to make them work quite well and then you can um, in this case I'll, because they're the same distance away I'm not going to use a separate mask I'm going to use the same radial um, gradient so I'm going to duplicate the radial gradient rather than duplicate the mask because what I want to do in a minute is affect all of them at the same time so I'm going to duplicate the radial there and it gives me a separate radial and I grab that and place it on this one OK, just make that a little bit smaller. I'm going to take that one as well, duplicate that one, and I'm going to pop it down onto the, these ones over here. That looks good. Keep duplicating them. Maybe a little bit on this one as well. Make this a little bit narrower and a little bit shorter. Same with this one, just a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to duplicate that one. Duplicate radial. And we're going to pull it over and pop one on each, each of these. So it's a little bit narrower. Duplicate again. A little bit narrower because the light's a little bit narrower there. That looks nice. Put that down a little bit. Just keep duplicating them and reusing them. There we go. Just a few left here. So duplicate again. Grab that. Put it over here. So they're all nice and straight. I'm going to grab another one and you notice how much difference there is in color we could try to adjust them so that they're all the same this one's actually slightly turned i'm just going to turn that slightly but i think that's what really gives the the sort of effect is all the different colors and all the different brightnesses so that that's working quite well I'm just going to turn that one as well slightly now the reason why i used all the same radial gradient here is that now if I want to subtract a brush to stop these flare ups at the top, as you can see there, I can just go down to subtract a brush. I can put the brush um, at reasonable feather. Let's go for about 40%, 100% flow. And I can just wash that through, literally just wipe that through over here and take out any additional up flare. Did you see I just cut across the top of that water area there? And that has removed any up flare from, from those, those radials all in one go. And that's a really good tip to, to, to work with. You'll also see that these lights up here are, are actually reflecting in the water down here. But these are quite bright. We might want to bring those down just a little bit on this gantry here. So I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to go to Object. okay? And I'm going to take quite a smallish type brush and I'm literally going to paint over this this sort of gantry if you like here make the make the brush a little bit come through try to just leave some maybe i could could have gone with a smaller brush let's just see how this works so i've just painted that over let go and it, it will select the gantry it selected the whole thing which is per perhaps not so good because if i reduce the brightness it changes the color of the sky so Let's undo that, Command or Control Z. Let's let's delete the uh, the mask itself. So I'm just clicking on the three little dots to the right of that mask 10. I'm just going to say Delete Mask 10. Okay, so that's gone. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to zoom in 
a little bit closer. We're going to take a smaller brush this time, so create mask, and then I'm just going to now retrace what I was doing to see if it, if it this time it actually captures it, and it does. So I can add another object, and we're going to just do a little bit at a time. So we're just going to go across there. There's a little bit there. Let that one go. So it's selected that. We're going to add another object. So we can keep adding to the same the same mask here. Make the brush smaller still, and just paint these in. There we go. So I'm going to have to do them all. Have to do them all separately to get the mask perfect. So just keep adding. Just keep adding objects, and that allows us to. Uh, get those those areas there we go so we've got those all selected but there is a couple of areas where the mask has sort of filled in the center so what we can do is what we've done previously now all of those objects all let's look 19 objects are in a single mask we can subtract a brush okay and then we can we make the brush smaller so it fits in this gap here. Let's come in a bit closer. And what we can do using that brush is we can we can remove the light, the, the sorry the um, the mask from within. You see, we can do that. We can also just just tidy up the edges as well if we want to there. Just if we've got a little bit over over too much coming out, so we can just pop that inside. And we can just take out those those inner areas, making the brush the right size. We'll just take the center out of that one as well. Just want to run along that top edge. We've got a nice clean edge along the top there. So I click once at that end. I move to the other end, hold down the shift key and press. And it will give us a nice sharp edge along that top edge because it will effectively be illuminated. So let's, let's just zoom back out. Now we've got our mask in place quite a detailed mask there but you can see it's only affecting the areas that we really want to we can now bring down the highlights a little bit on that on the bridge because remember it was quite bright so we can just bring that down a little bit and we can add in a bit of magenta to that light there just to give it a little bit of light balance now it might seem like an awful lot of effort right just for a little area but trust me these little things do make a difference when you you're putting together uh, an image so we're getting close to sort of finishing this image off. I just want to light maybe the river up a little bit more. And I certainly want to make this back area pop uh, with color and light. So I'm going to go back to create a new mask. I'm going to take a brush. OK, the brush is going to have 100% um, flow and it's going to have reasonably high for about 60%. So I can just I can just bring that in there. Now, what I have to be careful is I don't want to light the sky up. OK, so I could subtract the sky later, but it will struggle because it's inside this gantry to find the mask for that. So what we can do is we can click auto mask OK, with the brush. And so now if I start on a building here and, my, and I work my way across like such. It will light up the the um, it will pick up on the lighter areas and not so much on the darker areas. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to bring that bridge up as well. I think it's important and the light underneath it. There we go. And now if I adjust the, the brightness, we're still going to get a little bit. We're just still going to get a little bit up there. We can try subtracting. Let's just see, subtract the sky. As I say, no, it's not, it's not picked up on that sky. There we go. It has a little bit. It's got in there and done it a little bit. So that's OK. So we've now got the mask in place. Let's hover over the mask here. Yeah, that's what we've got. We don't want it on the wall over there, that little edge, and we don't want it on there. So we're just also going to subtract uh, a brush and uh, we're going to put the feather really low so we can just click at the top there and line up, hold the shift and click at the bottom just to take that edge out there. Same on this side. We don't want it to uh, over overhang here now we want to make this all pop back here so i think we need to add a little bit more color there we go we need to add this bring the saturation up a little bit i'm going to bring some mag mag magenta in there just to just to bring the colors true to nice oranges and then what i am going to do is i'm going to go down to clarity and pop some clarity in there just to really make it pop and a little bit of texture not too much and I think one thing it does need 
is some contrast. So just add some contrast there. Open the shadows up just a little bit more. That looks nice. Slightly down on the highlights. And that looks pretty good up there. I'm quite happy with that. Yep. Now, the sky is a little bit um, sort of orangey, and it's a grey sky, obviously. So let's see if we can just select the sky. See how much of the sky it picks. It picks up a little bit of this, so we can deal with that. But I might just add a bit of blue into that sky just to to make it work a little bit better. Um, the The sky mask is not cutting in here, so we just need to cut in there a little bit more. So we can we can add to this um, um, an object, and we can we can just highlight this square with the with the object so if i go around like this and then just fill in the, the the center it will pick up the edges there we go it will bring it in there i can do the same over here so i can add an object here as well and i can just bring that up and it will see where the edges are so we're adding this to the sky we're adding this to the sky at the moment um, little line there, I'm not sure what it needs doing, but we'll do it anyway. Add object, smaller brush. There we go, we're just going to come down there, add that little bit in as well. Now, the, the colour here is not quite right, so I probably want to just make sure we pick that up as well. So let, let's just, let's try the object function on that as well. So a little bit bigger brush, I'm just going to go along that edge there, down here, along here. I'm just going to go out to that edge there and just... Just bring that in and it should bring the sky back. There we go. So we've got that light now reflected in that bluer sky. So if I if I click on the sky mask, there we go. You can see that we've got it's passing into there. So if I actually hold on the mask now, you'll see that we've got those edges have all been brought in. There's maybe a little bit under the gantry that just needs to be done, but we don't want it on the buildings. As you can see, it is on the buildings. So what we're going to do here is just take it off the buildings. But let me just add this last little bit down here. So I'm going to go add objects and uh, just going to pop that in there. Just going to go in there like so. Let's see if that works OK. Yeah, it works reasonably well. There's a bit of a straight edge there. It's just... Uh, have a look at that coming a little bit closer. Yeah, we just need to get rid of that. So I'm just going to add one more object in here and then pick up this, this whole area here. And this is how you can help build your, your sky masks. You see, that's gone nice, nice through there now. Uh, nice blue. We probably want to do the same over here. Apologies for doing so many, but uh, just going to pop one in here as well. So just run along that edge there. We're just going to come down here onto the top of those buildings. Back up there, there we go. Fill it in. And you just get that nice blue effect moving all the way across. So let's go back to fit. Yeah, that works quite well. We could also look at this area over, over here as well. Um, I could try adding an object here. Take a bigger object. Now remember previously it picked up all of the infill when we did it. And we didn't really want that, but this time we can do it because we've got the sky on there. And there we go. You can see that's that's picked the colors up quite well. Um, I'm just going to add a brush with plenty of feather just to make sure that we get this, this bit of the sky here also picking up that color well. Yeah. And the last bit, just to make sure this sky is right, going to add one more object. I'm just going to... Take the brush, smaller brush, and just going to pick up this this area here. There we go, and it's got that sorted. So that's nice. So maybe this this uh, gradient we put in at the beginning, we can also add a bit of blue to that as well, just to make that sky nice, nice color. Good. So the river, all that's left is the river. I'm going to deal with that with uh, a brush. So I create new new mask. Take a brush. I'm going to put the feather quite high lots of flow quite a big brush i'm just gonna just gonna come in here picking up that river there we go 
So I can just brighten up the river a little bit, add that magenta that we've been working with, not too much, add some clarity to that river. There you go. Now, now we're talking. That pops really nicely. And I'm just going to finish off a little bit of contrast in there as well, just to bring it back in. Now, I think I'm going to say we're pretty well there. I think this little area here needs a little bit more light. I'm going to deal with that with a radial gradient coming through here. Put a nice long narrow radial gradient through here. Turn it. Just put it over there like so. Just bring the brightness up slightly in that area there. There we go. Give us a little bit of a foreground. And I'm going to add a little bit of contrast to that. Definitely add some clarity to that. And it's a little bit of texture. A little bit brighter, I think, with a little bit more blue. There we go. That works very well. Yep. I'm going to say I'm pretty happy with that. Just going to recrop the top down just a little bit more. And just bring this over slightly there. Hit return. So I think we're pretty well done. I'm just going to add some overall finishes. So we're not inside the mask. We're with the main, the main areas here. Just going to brighten the whole image slightly. Bring that up to 0.5. I'm going to do my blacks and my whites. I'm going to hold down the Alt key option on a Mac and uh, and then move the white slider just down a little bit. We don't want too much pure white coming through. I think about there. And the same with the blacks. I'm just going to bring some black into the image there down at the bottom. Just bring some true blacks in along the bottom to give us the full contrast there. And uh, it's, it's a very sharp, contrasty high clarity image you might just back off the clarity ever so slightly there we go just for the whole image do that and then i'm going to add some vibrance to make the color the colors pop perhaps a little bit more on the brightness and then the very last thing i'm going to do is go down to effects put in a little bit of a post crop vignette only a small one about 10 roughly and then i'm just going to bring the feather up to 100 just to sort of set that off slightly so that we'll make that minus 10 in there yep i think we're done really i think we're done yeah i i do like that a little bit more a little bit more on the the vibrance so hopefully you enjoyed that and um if you did please uh, click like it always helps and uh, love to see your comments and your questions and any tips that you might have so please feel free to put them down below and uh, and if you haven't already subscribed then it would be wonderful for you to join me on my adventure here on youtube and uh, thank you for taking the time to watch the video so for now i'm going to say bye bye